So you fancy yourself a quality new smartphone, but the problem is your financial resources are about as healthy as a diabetic pensioner on a strict diet of Greg's pasties and Buckfast. Well, don't you worry your pretty wee head, because these days you can spunk out less than 300 quid on a smartphone and still expect brilliant battery life, impressive gaming performance, dependable camera tech, and quite often some very handy features that you won't find in mega pricey flagships. Stuff like a headphone jack and memory card support. So here's my pick of the best budget smartphones you can get for under £300 right now towards the end of 2021 that I've personally tested and reviewed. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now first up, for just 250 quid, you can buy one of my favourite affordable phones of 2021, the Redmi Note 10 Pro from Xiaomi. It's a smart looking slab with Gorilla Glass 5 plated up front and it is splash resistant too in case you get a little bit overexcited. That layer of Gorilla Glass is protected a gorgeous and rather sizeable 6.67 inch AMOLED screen which for the price is proper spooge worthy. Stream some HDR shenanigans in Netflix and you'll be treated to crisp contrast and lifelike visuals. And that display also supports a 120Hz maximum refresh rate as well, which for an OLED screen at this budget price point is frankly stunning. You've got a stereo speaker setup, you've got dependable Bluetooth as well, and you do have a headphone jack with a good bit of high-res audio support too. Sploosh! Of course, how well you'll actually get on with the Redmi Note 10 Pro or any Xiaomi smartphone depends on your general feelings towards Xiaomi's MIUI launcher, which in its 12th iteration, I'm really, really embracing because it's got more of a stock Android vibe with a veritable feast of bonus features chucked on top. I'm talking the likes of the all-encompassing control center and a proper one-handed mode, as well as the ability to stream YouTube audio while the screen is hibernating. And general customization is a lot easier than with stock Android as well, but of course, MIUI can be a bit janky in places here in there but if you need to know more then go check out my in-depth Redmi Note 10 Pro review and I've also done a full dedicated video on MIUI 12 as well. The Redmi Note 10 Pro's Snapdragon 732G chipset can handle everyday gaming shenanigans no worries although there is no 5G support sadly. Battery life is solid and I really enjoy that 108 megapixel rear cam too which does a blinding job for your family pics and home movies. And as I say my full review is live right now so go check that out if your fancy has been well and truly tickled. Another one of my favourites at this price point and one with a nice clean UI is the OnePlus Nord CE 5G. Definitely don't be fooled by that deathly dull plastic finish. Besides the slightly annoying lack of any micro SD memory card support here, there's pretty much bugger all to properly complain about with the OnePlus Nord CE 5G. For a start, that 6.43 inch AMOLED screen is bright, sharp and poppy with a good bit of HDR10 support chucked in as well and 90Hz refresh rate as well for a bit of smooth sailing. No worries on the audio front either with a dependable bit of Bluetooth streaming and look, there's even a ruddy headphone jack for plugging in. OnePlus's excellent Oxygen OS launcher squats smugly on top of Android 11 and I really, really like it. It sort of retains that sort of stock Android vibe but adds in a ton of bonus features that are really useful like the excellent chill out Zen mode which is great for just blocking out everything that's going on with humanity. And you've also got the reassurance of a bit of future proofing as well with OnePlus's guarantee of two OS updates and three years of security updates on top of that as well. So not quite as strong a commitment as you'll get from the likes of Google of course and uh, Nokia but still pretty damn solid anyway. The Nord CE 5G is powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 750G platform, so everyday running is lovely and judder free. You can blast through all but the most demanding of Android titles, the likes of PUBG, Call of Duty Mobile, no worries, and you've got a dedicated gaming mode to help out too. And as the name of this smartphone very heavily hints, yes you do have a 5G modem built into that Snapdragon chipset as well for super nippy internet based shenanigans. Battery life is proper good, so you shouldn't run out of juice before the end of a long day, even with plenty of screen on time, while the 64 meg primary camera sensor does a decent enough job for your everyday photography, with an ultra wide angle lens also on offer, and some pretty decent 4K video smarts for shooting your home movies with the fam. And definitely do not sleep on the absolutely brilliant Poco X3 Pro, which only just hit the UK for a budget of 229 quid. Sometimes you can see it reduced to a rather sort of 200 pound mark in sales and specials as well. And it packs some incredible specs and features again for that sort of price point. It's essentially a reinvigorated version of the Poco X3 NFC, which I absolutely gushed all over in my best budget roundups of last year. And now you've got boosted performance thanks to the Snapdragon 860 chipset stuffed inside. This can handle absolutely anything you need, even a bit of Genshin Impact if you keep the details on low to medium settings. 
Like the Redmi Note 10 Pro, you've got a 6.67 inch Full HD Plus display, although this time it is IPS rather than OLED tech. But you still get reasonably punchy colours, plus an adaptive refresh rate that maxes out at 120Hz. You've once again got a stereo speaker set up here on the Poco X3 Pro, plus a headphone jack and reliable Bluetooth streaming to boot. There's NFC for your contactless payments, there's a really reliable and fast working edge mounted fingerprint sensor, basically everything you bloody need. And I really like the 48 megapixel main camera sensor as well, which captures sharp pictures of even the most squirmy of subjects, as well as respectable 4K footage. In fact, beyond this slightly garish design, there's not really much at all to dislike about the Poco X3 Pro. It's proper lush. Now, Poco used to be part of the Xiaomi family, but now even though it's split from its parent company, it does still use the MIUI launcher on all of its Poco smartphones. So beware, you will have that clunky heavy launcher with all of the crapware and the questionable number of future updates that comes along with it. Poco fans can also pick up the fresher X3 GT with its more mature restrained design. You've got a shatter resistant Gorilla Glass Victus display this time and the same feature packed MIUI experience. However, bear in mind that some of the great features found on the Poco X3 Pro have sadly been axed for this GT model. So for instance, there's no micro SD memory card support to expand the 128 or 256 gigs of onboard storage. Although at least that storage is still the nippy UFS 3.1 variety. No real changes in the screen tech, that near 6.7 inch IPS display is near identical to the Pro model with 120Hz refresh and HDR support. And while there is a stereo speaker arrangement and flawless Bluetooth 5.2 streaming on the GT, sadly Poco has axed the headphone jack as cruelly as it did away with that memory card slot. So why then would you want to get the Poco X3 GT over that excellent Pro model? Well, there's always that MediaTek Dimensity 1100 chipset, plus the dedicated liquid cool tech, which means that you can piss away hours on end with memory goblin games like Genshin Impact. You've got 5G support here on the Poco X3 GT across two SIMs at once, as well as Wi-Fi 6 support, so connectivity is absolutely sh** hot. On top of that, the GT's 5000 mAh battery got me through the most crazy of days, absolutely no worries whatsoever. That's helped along by the energy efficiency of that MediaTek chipset. And even when you do finally kill the Poco X3 GT stone dead, well, it's got 65 watt charging support, so it'll be back up to full in a jiffy. That 64 megapixel camera can cope with all manner of tricky shots, including hyperactive kids off their tits on Sherbet and Haribo, while your 4K home movies will be packed with detail. And if all of that sounds proper tempting and you're not put off too much by the lack of the headphone jack, the micro SD memory card support, well definitely go check out my full in-depth Poco X3 GT review up right now. Now Motorola is another manufacturer that's well worth keeping an eye on at this sort of budget price point. And one of the best new budget smartphones from Motorola is the fresh new Moto Edge 20 Lite, the most affordable of its trio of new flagship smartphones. The one weak point of the Edge 20 Lite is the MediaTek Dimensity 720 chipset, which is fine for everyday performance, but gamers will definitely want to look elsewhere. You can, you know, breeze through a game of Call of Duty Mobile on lower detail settings, but I wouldn't push it any further than that. Although Motorola, like many other manufacturers, does throw in a dedicated gaming tool which allows you to block notifications, record your progress, all that good stuff. But the Moto Edge 20 Lite definitely excels when it comes to battery life. You've got yet another 5000 milliamp whopper crammed inside of this thing, complete with 30 watt charging support. And I absolutely adore that pocket fill in 6.7 inch display. It's an OLED panel with sharp contrast, strong brightness and HDR10 plus streaming support. As for the camera tech, that main sensor is another 108 megapixel beast that uses pixel binning to produce bright, natural looking snaps. And anyone who's after a blower on a tightish budget should also have a squint at Realme. And this here, Realme 8 Pro, is one of their latest and freshest budget smartphones which you can grab for 279 quid here in the UK. The 8 Pro is actually reasonably compact and light at just 6.4 inches and 176 grams. And it also sports a rather understated design. Understated apart from the massive f off slogan branded right across the arse end that is. Realme UI is the launcher of choice here naturally. And like Me UI, it is a bit of a hefty bugger. You do see occasional bits of jankiness here and there, but it does also offer a bugger ton of extra bonus features, including the usual one-handed shenanigans and bonus customization options. And like many of the other phones in this budget blower collection, you've got micro SD support to expand the onboard storage and NFC support as well for your contactless payments. That OLED screen is a blinder, although sadly it does max out at 60Hz refresh, unlike most of the rival devices we've already covered. And the Realme 8 Pro also makes do with a single bottom-mounted speaker. There's no stereo action here. 
The Snapdragon 720G chipset can deal with everything up to and including games like Call of Duty and PUBG, but you will want to look to the likes of the Poco X3 Pro if you want to play more demanding titles. While the 4500mAh battery delivers strong returns, easily lasting a pretty full-on day. So overall, I've got to say the Realme 8 Pro definitely ain't quite as impressive in the specs department compared with a lot of the other phones that I've already covered in this best budget smartphone roundup and it is towards the upper end of that £300 budget price point as well. But if you spy a great deal on it, then I'm still really enjoying my time with the Realme 8 Pro. There's lots to love here, so go for it. And last up, even Samsung fans will find some Galaxy handsets for under 300 quid these days, which still boast a similar One UI experience to those Wallet Emtian S21 blowers. Now admittedly, these budget Galaxy smartphones are a bit of a mixed bag usually to say the very least, but one of the very best ones that you can bag yourself in 2021, one that really impressed me, is the Samsung Galaxy M32, which makes surprisingly few compromises to hit that sub £300 price point. First impressions on admittedly amazing thanks to the cheapy plasticky design but peer past the not particularly great aesthetics and you can't help but adore that 6.4 inch super AMOLED screen which is as bright, punchy and gorgeous as any of its affordable rivals despite the lack of HDR support. The 90Hz refresh rate matches most of the competition here and to be fair my bugger old peepers can't really tell the difference between 90 and 120Hz these days anyway and you've also got a dedicated headphone jack as well for plugging in for some slick sound and audio. Performance comes courtesy of MediaTek's Helio G80 which does occasionally stumble but can generally cope with everyday existence just fine as long as you aren't much of a gamer. And no, sadly there is bugger all support for 5G so if you do want that bit of connectivity future proofing you'll have to look elsewhere. But at least the Helio chipset doesn't sap much power and once again you've got a mighty 5000 mAh battery so again the Galaxy M32 can power its way through the most ridiculous of days just like a lot of the competition. Samsung's One UI launcher is as lovable and feature stuffed as always even if it does double down on quite a lot of services complete with the Nox security suite to keep your privates out of the eyes of naughty criminal types. And when it comes to the camera tech, a lot of budget Samsung smartphones don't so much drop the ball as chuck it on the ground and stamp on it several times over, but the Galaxy M32 64 megapixel main camera sensor can capture natural looking pics and great family snaps even in quite testing conditions. Although yes, the video chops aren't too hot at all, so if you like shooting home movies, you'll want to look elsewhere. So definitely some compromises as far as the hardware is concerned with the Galaxy M32 but the software experience is fantastic and I have very few complaints really at this sort of price point. And again you can check out my full in-depth review for all you need to know. So that is it, that is my roundup of the very best budget friendly smartphones you can grab yourself in the UK towards the end of 2021 for under £300. I did have to leave some out unfortunately, some didn't quite make the cut but definitely if I missed out your own favourite budget blowout that costs under 300 quid, definitely let me know in the comments below. And yes, you can call me a knobber if you like, I'm more than used to it. So check out my reviews of other budget friendly smartphones, pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell to be the first to hear when new blowers land here in Blighty and please do have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you!